Good morning, class. This is your... How are you today? Welcome to the in Health Subject, Second Semester, Fourth Quarter, Week One. Our learning objectives for this morning are at the end of the lesson, students will be able to determine the background of the game volleyball, identify what are the equipments of volleyball and know how to do the basic skills in volleyball. The lesson that we are going to tackle this morning is about events addressing health fitness issues and concerns. Volleyball Introduction. A team sport includes any sport which involves players working together towards a shared objective. A team sport is an activity in which a group of individuals on the same team work together to accomplish an ultimate goal which is usually to win. Football, basketball, volleyball, baseball, and other team sports Provide amazing personal development opportunities that every student, regardless of his age, can benefit from. The importance of teamwork is huge in every possible social environment you can think of, and it shouldn't be neglected. So what is volleyball? Volleyball is a team sport played with a ball and a net. There are teams on each side of the net. One team hits the ball over the net and into the other team's court. The other team must thus hit the ball back over the net and inbounds within three tries without letting the ball touch the ground. There are two main kinds of competitive volleyball played in the world right now. There are team volleyball and beach volleyball. Both are Olympic sports and have competitive leagues. Team volleyball is played indoors on a hard court with six people per team. Beach volleyball is played outdoors on the sand with two players per team. The rules, strategy, and discussion here will focus on team volleyball. Volleyball can be a lot of fun to play. To play with friends, you can play with any number of people and most anyone can join in. To be a competitive player takes a lot of practice. Good height and jumping ability helps a lot. Now, let's proceed to the history of volleyball. Volleyball was originally invented by William Morgan in 1985. He was an athletic director at the Young Men Christians Association or YMCA and was trying to come up with a game that would be fun, like basketball, but less taxing. Of course, the rules have changed some since then, but it quickly became a popular sport at the YMCA. The name volleyball came about when a man named Alfred Husted noticed how the game had a volleying nature. People started calling it volleyball and the name stuck.
Volleyball was first played as an official Olympic sport in the 1964. In the 1964 Olympics, Japan won the first gold medal in women's volleyball and the USSR won the first gold for men's volleyball. Now let's proceed to the volleyball equipment and court. An indoor volleyball is typically white but may have some other colors as well. It's round with 8 or 16 panels and is usually made of leather. The official indoor volleyball is 25.5 to 26.5 inches in circumference and it weighs 9.2 to 9.9 .9 ounces and has 4.3 to 4.6 air pressure. A youth volleyball is slightly smaller. Beach volleyballs are slightly bigger, weigh the same but have much less air pressure. The volleyball court is 18 meters long and 9 meters wide. It is divided in sides in the middle by the net. The net is 1 meter wide and set up so that the top of the net is 7 feet 11 5, 5 8 inches above the ground or right around 8 feet. The only other key feature is a line that is drawn on each side 3 meters from the net and parallel to the net. This line is called the attack line. It defines the front row and back row areas. Volleyball skills. Volleyball is a sport that requires you to master to master a complex skill set because you rotate from playing front line positions to back line positions. You constantly are shifting from setting up offensive plays to completing offensive plays. You also must shift quickly from offense to defense. During any given sequence in volleyball, a player must be prepared to execute a variety of skills. Service the volleyball serve is the first opportunity for a player to score a point. It begins its rally. Once you toss the ball in the air, you must contact the ball to send it over the net to land inside the lines of the court. Each player gets only one chance to serve. The serve can touch the net and continue into the opponent's court. When the serving team loses a rally, it loses the right to serve. The receiving team then rota rotates one position in the court. So the pictures on your screen shows the three kinds of volleyball serve. First, we have the underhand serve. Second, we have the overhand serve. And the last one, we have the jump serve. Dig. The dig is a form of forearm pass that is used to control the ball and pass it to the setter of the net. It is usually the first contact by the team and an effective shot to use in defense. Such as when receiving a spike, the libero hand handles much of the team's serve reception and is pivotal in backcourt defense. So how to dig? First, you need to clasp both hands together. Second, one palm inside the other. Then pointing both thumbs to the ground. 
And then lastly, bend your knees. The set is an overhead pass used to change the direction of the bead and put the ball in a good position for the spiker. The set is usually the second contact in a rally and the person who sets the ball the most is called the setter. The setter on a volleyball team is like a point guard on a basketball team who runs the offense and calls the plays. Next, we have the spike. The spike is when the ball is hit or smashed across the net. It is the most powerful shot in volleyball and the most effective way to win a rally. Next, we have block. A block is the first opportunity for a team on defense to keep the team on offense from hitting into their court. Once the whistle blows and your team serves the ball over the net, your team is on defense and ready to defend your court. Valuable drills Volleyball drills are used to enhance various performance factors such as ball control, footwork, and timing on approach jumps or blocks. Coaches and players need to understand the importance of training with purpose. A purpose of a drill could be to fix a problem or improve volleyball skills such as passing or hitting. Performing your deals with purpose has many benefits. First, if a player understands the purpose of the drill, rather than just going through the motions, they will be more interested in the training. Drills for volleyball are important for developing habits. If players are constantly focusing on how to perform a volleyball drill correctly, they will improve their ability to focus during competition. If coaches will set goals and set a specific focus to a drill, they will have better understanding of when to move on or adjust the drill for a better training effect. So that's all for our lesson this morning. I hope you enjoy and you learn a lot. For your activity and for your quiz, just follow the GAITF link on your screen. Have a nice day!